Hello, good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Good morning. Come on in. Day five of the cockadoodle doodle. How are you feeling? Come on in. I know you're there. Grab a seat. Get your drink. We're early to the party. It's going to be easy today. Low key chill. Low key. Wasn't he a god? Loki. Wasn't he the baddie? Thor's brother. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Ah, oh dear, oh dear. Good to have your company. It's a little bit overcast today, not blue skies today, which is probably better for a lot of us because it was getting a little bit excessively warm yesterday, wasn't it? Hey, eh? Come on, it's good to have your company. Last day of the colouring week. Last day of the colouring week. And um, can you believe we've been colouring a postcard all week? I guess the thing is, it's it's for us. It's it's just a, a vehicle, isn't it? It's a vehicle. It's something that we've all got in common. Then we all hang out together. We're doing the same thing, and that feels good. I like that commonality. I like that. I mean, we have a lot of commonality, especially nowadays. So that's a good thing. And then we learn tricks and tips. And as the weeks go on, of course, like I was saying yesterday. We keep adding to our little toolbox, our little skill sets. And today we'll add a couple more, you know. And, and then what happens is when you go to do your own artwork and your own creativity or your own mindful process, then you'll find your toolbox is full, you know, from eight, week, eight weeks. Can you believe that? What is going on? Eight, this is the last, it's eight weeks now. We complete. Come on in. It's three minutes to ten. Good morning, everybody. Bonjour. Guten Morgen. Komm doch rein. Yeah. Eight weeks we've been doing this. So if you've been with me since the beginning, who's been with me since the beginning? Hands up. Who's been here since day one? Do you know that lockdown was in March? I looked it up earlier. It was like the 20-something of March, 27th of March or something mad. Is it 27th or the 22nd? Let me just check. Oh no, it's gone off my computer. It's about that anyway, 22nd or the 27th. And now it's the 22nd of May already. That's mad, isn't it? So much has changed, hasn't it, in your life? So much has changed. So much has changed in my life. So if it's changed in my life, it's changed in your life. It's funny how we accept things, hmm? how we adapt, don't we? We come to terms with a little bit of kickback, a little bit of, oh, I don't know if I like this, and then it's like, well, you've got no choice, deal with it. And, and we're really good at that. I think we're really good at that as a, as a race. Well, as a species, actually. I think the humans are pretty good at it, you know, compared. Anyway, yeah. You know what Darwin said, don't you? He said something to the tune of it is not the strongest of the species that will survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most adaptable to change. And I think that you and I, we, are pretty good at change. You know, we've proved that in the last couple of months that we're able to, to take instruction, to accept situations, to act on, you know, be sensible. I think we've been we've been doing a you know what I think we should give ourselves a pat on the back go on give yourself a pat on the back you in, you deserve it I think we've done brilliantly actually hey haven't you well I can only speak for myself but I think I'm doing all right I've had my wobbles haven't we all wouldn't it be weird if we didn't you know if we just went yeah whatever carry on it is what it is. 
Yeah, but hang on a minute. You have to question it, don't you? <clears throat> Otherwise, then there's something really wrong. So you question it, you wonder about it, you, you listen, you make your own, you draw your own conclusions, don't you? And then you map out a, a kind of a solution that works for you. That's, I think, what we do. Know thyself. Know thyself. You've got to know what works for you, don't you? Eh? And I think we're doing a cracking job. Anyway, come on. It's time to doodle. It's 10 o'clock in the building. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. And I'm not going anywhere. Little little baby steps maybe over to mum and dad's tomorrow again. But, you know, I haven't been... I haven't been out of the, I haven't been beyond my garden gate this week. And I have to make that decision, you see. If I want to go and spend time with my mum and dad, then I have to, I have to completely reduce any uh, activity on my part that involves uh, meeting other people because I would never forgive myself. You understand. So there you go. That's what I do and it's fine. I, I, I can work with that. I can live with that. It's just a, you know, so, whoa, did you hear that, Tommy? Mm. Okay, right, we're ready to rock and roll. Stuart's in the building with us today. Good morning, come on in. Stuart's with you. He will be able to answer any of your questions. Morning, Stuart. Good to have your company too. And, um, and so today I thought, right, day five, we're doing the background, aren't we? Day one, we did the cockerel. Day two, we did... The hen. God, what's going on? Day three. Oh, no, I think we did. Day one and two, we did the cockerel. He took ages, didn't he? So let's have a look what we're going to do today. The background. Right, let's have a look. So I've put a background in. And, and there are lots of different options. Do you know, do you remember when last time we did the, the doodle with the, or the colouring with the nut hatches, right? So we're building our, we're building our, uh, our, our toolbox. Remember, we're filling our toolbox. Now, I promise you that if you took that dark, a dark, like dark grass or a bright moon, and you, you took this and you put it over on under behind this one, it would look phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if you took this lovely light pastel with the dotty, with the, the dotting around the outside and you transferred over here, that would look lovely too, okay? So what we're doing here is, rather than do the same thing again for impact, we're gonna learn a new skill set. So this time, what we're gonna do is learn how to, let's have a look. See how smooth it is, let it, let it just, right, see, so it's nice and smooth and it's graduated, isn't it? where the light hits the, the grey, it's, it's a nice graduation there. And then, of course, what you'll see is that, of course, the front figures, we've added a little bit of shadow, haven't we? So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to do a really lovely, smooth background like that, not too mottled. Then we're going to do some graduated work like that. We're going to do a little bit of round the edge, a little bit of stippling round the edge. I like that look. I like that kind of dotting. And the longer you spend on that, the more impact, the, the better it looks. If I could add another hour of dotting just so that it's darkest round the outside and then it comes in and it blends in like that, you know. And do you know what was really interesting? Because yesterday I was thinking about a frame and did I like it better on black? Yes. Do, what do I like? Do I? No, it needs lighter. And then I remembered, right, that we've got these in the cupboard at work because I remember years ago when we first brought out the colouring book, look, isn't that lovely? See, so we've got mount boards with backing boards. So if you wanted to to frame your work, because I've heard lots of you saying, oh, I want to frame my work. This is, this is for my art room. This would be perfect because I'll remember, you know. Um, then we've got them. And um, we've got them on the website. Look, this, this is nice as well. Let me show you this one. So this is, um, I'll get rid of that. Let me show you this one. Doesn't that look lovely? Look. 
See? So that, they sit perfectly. We had them made for the postcards, can you believe it, a couple of years ago. You know, and, and that's also why, let me have a look. Yeah, see this one here, if I show you this one, right? Look, see the 12 by 12s? Believe it or not, when we did that, there is a method in my madness when I do these things. Remember the big colouring book? Look, it's exactly the right size for the 12 by 12s. See, look. See how that would sit in there? So that's why they're there. And that's why they're there. And that's the trouble, you see. So you all gallop on to the next project and the next product and the next this and the next that. And then it occurred to me, I thought, hang on a minute, frames, because I want to frame it. And I thought this would be a beautiful series, you know, like every other week, one of the colouring. And I thought, yeah, that's what I want to do. And so, and the, there's also a black one in the set. Let me show you. Because um, you've got, you've got a white one, which is the one I've used there. Then you've got a cream one, which is lovely. Then you've got that talk one, which goes there is nice. And then the black, which is the one that everybody seems to go to. But actually this time I didn't. So you've got those four colours and four backing boards to go with it. So if you are thinking of making an event, uh, you know, commemorating what we're doing here in the Shack Shack, then that might be an answer. Right, so let's get that out of the way. I don't want to lose that because I'm going to frame that. That's going on my wall, I've decided. And, and now we want to look at this one. So... Let's have a look. I'm going to, I'm work, this is the one I'm working on to show you the tricks and tips and this is what the, we're headed towards. So what colours am I going to use? The background I've used, um, I'm going with a polychromo, I've used cream. It looks quite yellow but it's actually cream and in German it's called Strohgelb. Good morning, come on in. Doodle family. And this one is warm grey number two. That's the one I'm going to use in this background here. Mm -hmm. And then I've also got warm grey number five, which I'm going to use to cre create shadow. And then, in case you want to gather all your bits together before we start, oh, I'll tell you what I did use. Uh, and I did actually use a, a lighter grey, cold grey, just to, just to kind of bridge the gap a bit. And then, when we get to do the dotting, I actually went down to the number five and the number... Uh, I used the five, the four and the, th the three to get the dots around the outside. Because we always use, don't we, when we're doodling, we're always using the, the fine ones, the 05 and the, um, and the number one. But I thought, yeah, but for the dotting around the outside, for that, for that stippling, the larger pens are really great for that. And then you, work, you need your old HB, I'm going to use my HB, because that's what we'll use to make it look three-dimensional. See how we lift it off the, um, the back and we use a, a pencil to do that. So forgive the fact that I haven't gone as far as you probably have. You've got all your flowers and that. I ran out of time and then other things come up and then I, I forget. And uh, that, 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 that. Right, so, but I can teach you the trick. I can teach you the trick because it's quite straightforward. The first thing we need is an HB pencil. Don't worry, I'll just do this first and then when we've, when we've done this, then I'll get in tight so we can look really closely. So you can see here, what I want to do is create a divide. Now, I've just done a simple round one. You could do whatever you fancy. You can make a hill going up. You can make a hill going down. You can make, you know, like our ribbon roads. You could make a, a landscape in the background. The reason I decided to keep it simple was because I felt that the front images were really um, like centre stage, you know, and I didn't want to detract from them. So I left it as it was. I mean, grass in the back would be nice, but then I thought, no, I want to just keep it simple. Sometimes that's OK, too. And if I if I hold it up to this, let me offer it up to this camera here and you'll see when you look at it like from an angle, it really does look as if 
this is laying down on top of the background. Doesn't it look as if it's pleated and lay? It, I love that. And, and you know what I love about it is it's as flat as a tack. It's all an optical illusion just done with a little bit of shading. Isn't that cool? Okay. Is it as windy where you are as it is here? It's really getting windy. It's The trees are really bending. So what we're going to do, I'm going to stick to my plan and I'm just going to take my HB pencil and I'm going to create my divide. So I'm going to do like the globe. So I'll come up like that. I'll come round here and when I when I get to a an image, I'll go past it like that. That's it. Then I'll keep coming down like so. That's it. That's all I want to do. So I'm just going to go in there. Don't have to do it don't have to do it hard. I just need a, a, a guideline, don't I, where I want to get to. So that would be it then, like that. Okay? Can you hear my stomach rumbling? That's absent. You know what Tommy's telling me? We want tea. We want tea. <laughs> he hasn't had tea for a few days. That's all right. All in good time. Now, let's get a piece of white copy paper. Get a bit of copy paper. Waste not, want not. That'll do. And now we're going to get our, what we're going to learn to do is use the side of the pencil, right? So when you use the side of the pencil, regardless whether you're using a polychromo or a pergoliner, check it out. This is a pergoliner now. See, when you use the side of the pencil, can you see that all right? You see the state of my hands? Look how yellow they are. Do you know that? Turmeric. That was me trying to be healthy last night. I decided to do do the, one of these lovely ju you know in the juicer, and I thought I'll oh, throw everything in that I was it was starting to look a little bit as if it was on the turn. So I thought yeah. So I had some tomatoes and some grapes and some beetroot. I threw it all in for this power drink, and then I got all all organic. And I thought oh I know that's a good idea. So I slung a bit of ginger in. That was lovely. That would give it a kick. I thought, and then fatal I went for the turmeric <laughs> and it was all right when I put it in it's washing the whole lot again when you when you have to clean the juicer that's when the fun starts so now it looks like I've been on the old Holborn <laughs> it looks like I've been on the old baggy <laughs> right back to basics so it doesn't matter whether which pencil you're using it's it's all about using the flat okay and what we're going to do now is we're going to can I just show you a couple of tricks? These, this is what I do with my yellow turmeric fingers, right? <laughs> my tummy's terrible. Right, I use this finger to stop me going too far. See, so this finger here, it helps me, it guides me, because I'm just going through like this, see? Not too hard, we're just putting an undercoat down. Don't worry, this is gonna take up the whole hour. If you think this takes five minutes, you are so wrong. Right, and this finger, this one, stops me going too far. See, I'm knocking it, you can hear it. And I move it around and it gives me control. You don't want to really, even though it's a very light color, you don't really want to go over. Let's pretend these are all colored in, aren't they? In your, in your picture, they're probably all colored in. Forgive me for not doing that. So you just go round and you avoid the bits you've coloured in. I mean, with this colour, it's not radical because it's so light, isn't it? But so trip no, trick number one is you keep your finger. See, I'm just using my finger to just... And you'll notice as well, I'm trying to keep going in the same direction as well. So then what you can do is, if you need to get in tighter, just come up the pencil a little bit. You see how I came up the pencil a little bit then? And as soon as you come up the pencil a little bit, you'll feel you've got more control. I think it's all about becoming familiar with your with your tools, isn't it? Like if you're a, if you're a colorist or a, you like coloring, then you're going to use pencils a lot. And then when you use pencils a lot, the more you use them, the more control you'll get over them. I think that's the same with everything, isn't it? It's like I've been stamping for the best part of 30 years now. 
So to me, a stamp is a very easy um, art tool. That's all they are to me. They're tools. They're instant line art for me. Okay. Pattern builders, you know, so you just get used to your tools, don't you? There you go. So we put that colour in, like that. And you can see if you've missed a bit by offering it up to the light. If you can't see it like that, then just hold it up to the light. Just hold it up to the light like that and you'll see because they're oily, these pencils, and so you can see where it's shiny. I can see immediately if I've missed anything. I've got a really good undercoat already there. So it doesn't take so long, does it? Let's have a look. Am I going too fast? So you do your undercoat first, see, and then you know what you've done now is you've laid down the area. So you've got the la you've got the layout now. You know that that's going to be the area. Look how much darker it is. That's that four layers on. That's all. It's just four layers on. And the, and and it's just a it's just literally a question of just adding layers. So it's just depth. But you're better off doing one, two, three layers than going straight into dark like that. So now let's do this, turn this round, right? And I, now I'm holding the pencil a bit further up, look. You see, it makes a big difference where, how you hold the pencil. And now I'm gonna put my Dame Edna's on because I'm going in for the, the detail bits. So we'll go over the same thing again, but this time, instead of just sweeping across, it's those little, you know, those little circular motions. That's what we're going to do now. And that will help us get into those areas now, like so. You can pick any colour you like out of your, whatever you're using. Any colour you like will do. So this is the cockerel, so we won't go through his face. See, soft circular motions, and you can see immediately, you can see the colour changing, can't you? So, out, so we'll work our way backwards from that, that edge. Is that okay? And that's it really, it's that simple. So we're just going to keep going, circular motions, like that. We're going to put all the colour in before we do the dotting. We'll do all the background first. So this is quite straightforward, really. This is, you know, when we get to do the colouring and the doodling. So we've done all the tricky bits, haven't we? This is where we, we just relax into it. Relax into it. Just keep circular motions around your images. And the thing is, you see, you don't want to press too hard because in a minute, if we want to do shadow work, you know, when we want to put the shadows in around the back of the flowers and what have you, like this, let's go up tight so you can see it. See, that's why you don't want to press too hard and just go in there and you see, all, see, just keep your eye on the shadows. So all the shadows, they've gone in over the top of the yellow. So you have to keep that quite, um, you know what we, we know, don't we? When we press too hard, we know that it, um, it creates a seal with the polychromos and the pergoliners and then you can't get in anymore. If that happens and you have pressed too hard, then we know, don't we? All you've got to do is take your, um, your wubber. <laughs> these, do you know what I checked on the website last night? These actually are our biggest selling item this month. <laughs> that tells me everything I need to know. That means I'm not alone. I know that. <laughs> I love it. So the second layer, we're just going to small circular motions. 
that's so. That's not so bad, is it? I had some smashing names yesterday for these guys. I'm sticking with Dottie and Dick. <laughs> Especially now I've done all that dotting around the outside. Do you remember yesterday when we were doing um, shading and we learned, we were looking at the flowers, we were looking at these flowers and, and I said about creating shade just with one colour rather than using um, two colours and, uh, and I, just by adding the same colour plus pressure and that's not dissimilar to what we're doing here really. So you just work your way around systematically. I think thing about this is as well because you don't have to think too much about it this is the relaxing part you know I think um, I think that's it's important because all we're doing is hanging out together learning a couple of tricks and tips supporting each other there's a word that we haven't used yet we're supporting each other, aren't we? It's nice. I love it. I love it. And I'm not fussed if my picture's not a masterpiece. It's not about that. It's, it's not about that at all. It's absolutely, it's, it's about um, letting go and just having a go. Let go and have a go, you know. It's something that we say in the craft world. He who has never made a mistake has probably never made anything. And, uh, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. I think a lot of us, you know, we're so fearful around getting it wrong that we don't even get it out of the packet. <laughs> How many times have I heard people say, right, hang on, we're on the, sorry, I'm digressing here. Warm grey, number two, or any colour. You know, you pick a colour. You might want to do a lovely, um, it'd be interesting to see what you come up with. Like this one, it could be green down here, a nice green or you decide. Right, let's do the undercoat again. Should we use this, the side? We're going to use the side of the pencil again. Okay. Yeah, what I was saying was, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, I have bought the starter kit, you know, like for Groovy, but I haven't got it out of the packet yet. It's like, really? Or this is, this is one of the most common ones. I've got the jelly plate, I've got the gel press, I bought it, I love what you do with it Barbara. <laughs> um, but I haven't, I haven't got it out of the packet yet. Well, well hello, <laughs> you've got to get it out of the packet, what was the point of buying it? Hey, I saw something on Facebook, uh, I think it was this morning, and uh, there, was a, there was a quip about, a lady was saying that 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 her addiction is is actually in the in the buying of the product. She she only does the artwork so that she can buy more. <laughs> well, I think I do it because it it relaxes me. It really does. So I've got my I've got my warm grey down. You done that one? Right, so you just go to that edge there. Again, just the undercoat. We're only doing an undercoat. I think one of the things, if you if you learn anything from these colouring sessions, I think one of the things you've got to get in your toolkit is time. It takes time. It all takes time. And there we go. Look, have a look at there's a little bit of grey under there. Look, this is where you start to isolate the area. It takes as long as it takes and it's about the process. See? So as soon as I put a bit of grey in there, see? So you just colour in the background. Circular motions like that give you a smoother effect. So you see where the green is, you see where the, there. So if you look at the one I've already done, have a look from on top and you can see there's all the grey in there. 
I could add layers to this as well if I wanted to, just keep going. But you see when you start to, let me go in a little bit tighter, Let's have a look. If I just pull this camera in a bit, that might help, hey? Of course, that's a bit strong, Gray. Hang on a minute. Is that better? Yeah, that's it. Do forgive my hands today. The turmeric's done a right number on them. <laughs> supposed to be good for you, though. Well, there you go. It's not like I'm going out, is it? <laughs> so you see, it's all about when you look at the one that I've already done versus the one I'm working on, you can see exactly how many layers there are of colour. I think it's worth bearing that in mind, that you can't get the depth. If you want a light colour, you build it up. Even, even, even a light colour needs building up. Yeah? So let's go back into this one now and let's just let's get a little bit more depth going on that top edge. So again, I'm holding the pencil a little bit differently and I'm adjusting the pressure. In, you know, I'm just pressing a little bit harder. So we've got those soft circular motions again. See, and what we're trying to do is learn how to, so that we don't get stripes. Yeah? Easy. There we go. Oh, that's his face. So we've got the lighter colour in, the warm grey. You got that too? And you can see down where she's here as well. Let's have a look around here because again, we can see, I mean, I haven't coloured the flowers in, but I'm, that's all right. It's, it's, the sequence is up to you, isn't it? Whether you do the background first and then the front. We just, we worked in reverse, didn't we? We worked from the front to the back. Right, I'm just showing you the tricks, that's all. Right, so that's that, that's that, that's that. So you've got your colours in, see? So what you're doing is you're, you're looking for your background and you can see then... Is that background there? Yeah, that's a bit of background. See, I missed that bit. So we'll add that bit in there as well. Have you got all your background ready? So we've done our undercoat now. I think it's there's a there's a skill set. Oh, those glasses are so strong. There is a it's about learning to control the pressure, how much, how hard you press, and and the fact that I thought about it, I thought, oh, they're going to get bored just colouring in, you know, of the background like this. But it's about apart from practicing and and understanding that the pressure is key you know if you want that lovely smooth graduated effect without lines then you have to press like press is the wrong word you you just you kiss the surface it's like you just sweep over the top of the card and and you build up depth of color by by putting layers down not by pressing harder because when you press hard, then you get that seal and then you can't get in anymore. So, so it's a really good exercise, this. What we'll do now, we've done our light grey. Have you done your light grey? I'm letting you catch up here. Let's do our light grey. There you go. Let's do our light grey. And then when we've done our light grey, you all right with this? Am I, I don't want to motor ahead. Let's have a look. Let's do the next bit. Because this is the bit where you, you, you'll see, when you add the dark grey, this is where you're really going to see the colour. So this is the test of how good you're getting at hardly, at hardly touching the surface. Yeah, this is where you're going to see. Because you lean on something, lean on something, and then what we're going to do is really, really gently go along there so you're hardly touching. Because you can always add it. That's the whole idea, isn't it? 
but what we're trying to do is make a, a shadow that doesn't look like a stripe right across the horizon. Okay, so come down like that, look, look in there, and then see circular, like that, circular motions, and you watch this side versus that side. I'm just going to work on the one side so that you see. And because I'm not pressing hard, you see, the dark colour, it, it blends in beautifully over the top of the, of the light grey. So this is warm grey number five, which is a lovely colour. And it's, it, it's blending in beautifully over the top of the other colour. Look. This is the one we use a lot for shading, isn't it? Right, watch this. So you just keep going more and more and more. I'm just sticking in one area so you see the contrast between where I'm working and where, I, where I'm not working yet. So you just keep going along that edge. And then when I want to work away from the circle, as soon as I want to work away from that line, I start going in little circular motions. See? It's really not hard. It's just practice. It's, it's what we were saying at the beginning of the hour. It's about getting that control over your tools. You know, getting the control over your tools. And then perhaps if you want to add a little bit of shadow on the leaves, this is where you, you could if you chose to. Maybe a little bit of shadow down underneath her, you see? Looks a bit more like, she looks like an armadillo with that leaf there behind her. But have a look now, like, you see along here? See, I prefer to turn this around and if I'm going to put a bit of shadow along here now, let's just, let's just do it. I'll just get a bit of a chisel going with that grey colour and then I'm going to come along here, but you've got to make it really, really gently. Here we go. And if you feel that it's looking a little bit too much, too radical, See, because obviously the leaves are behind, aren't they? So you do a bit of cross hatching. So you go that way, go that way. Oh, I've got a stripe. Press too hard. Don't matter. So you just go down and down. Because all this is all in the background, see? So you go straight over the top of the images as well. And now this is going to start giving the picture depth and texture and personality. Especially on yours, because you've already coloured in your, your hair. And Dick and Dottie are already ready to go to the party. You see? So this is now getting darker and darker along there, isn't it? There it looks a little bit too too hacky. See how I haven't really got a good a good um, shade on that one. So there's the trick is to get darker right at the base like that. There you go. Just kiss that line up and then go in again. And you'll see when you do this you get a fantastic contrast and then if you if you want you see you can take your it's the blending thing watch this so now you're going to go in with your gray one your 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 mellow one the play it safe one and you just bring that in like so and you'll see then right so we've got both colors going there and now See, it's all about the tools, isn't it? If you've got them. If you, if you haven't got them, you, you can just use your pencils to keep, keep going. But as soon as you use a blending, these dry, pen, these dry nibs, what you'll see is as you watch this, you'll see it just smooths one into the other. The line here will disappear because it just smooths the colours into each other. You just bring them in. There you go. So just draw them up like this. There you are. And that gets rid of the lines. It smooths out the artwork nicely as well. See how it's working? 
So, so this is how you, you build up your depth. Yeah. And when we go to one that I did earlier, right, let's have a look here. See, I've already, I've done exactly the same here. There's no difference here. So I've done a little bit there and I've done a little bit down there. I've, I've added a little bit of yellow. You can see I've gone in and, and zhuzhed up the, the leaf in the background. Let's try this. See this, see this here? The shade on the stalk there. Should we try it on that one? Should we try it? Let's just try it. So what we could do is we could take um, the lighter grey first. Let's try the, take the lighter, the warm grey, and let's just let's just add a little bit of shadow along that edge now. Just a little bit of shadow, so that it's a little bit darker along here. Give it a little bit of that. Don't press too hard though. You enjoying this? I find this so relaxing. I find this so relaxing. Right, so when you look at it like that, you'll see it's already a little bit darker because I've used the same colour. See that, see the sort of flatness, the chisel? That doesn't half help, you know. So I've got that and I've just changed the colour up a little bit. Circular motions. Okay, and then, right, so if you've got the colouring pencils, we're going to go to that warm grey, number five, yeah, but I'm telling you, an HB pencil or the, the lead pencils, these ones here, the, the colouring pencils or any HB pencil will do this job, okay. We're waiting on a Big on the boat at the moment, the Faber-Castell pencils that um, a lot of you have ordered, um, they're, they're, um, they're delayed and there's nothing that we can do at the moment um, except take orders and, um, and chase. They should have been a, a couple of weeks ago. But do you know what, given all the circumstances, there's, um, there's nothing we can do, you know. We've got plenty of pergoliners, um, but we ran out of polychromos. But it's okay. I'm sure you've got something to colour in, and, and I hope that you'll be patient. They'll get there when they get there. Won't be too long. Won't be too long. Right, do you see what I'm doing? So you go in like that, and then you just flick through, and you, I've got it right on the edge, real dark on the edge of the and then I flick out. So I go along there a little bit and then I feather back out again. Just like that. Yeah, I apologise if you're waiting on your polychromos. Whew. Believe you me, I'm waiting on them too. It's a survival thing at this stage as well. Right, see, so then I'll take my nib and as soon as I do that, the two colours just go... Look at that, isn't that perfect? So you can see how you just, you can build up your colour and look how three dimensional it looks. It looks, it went from being as flat as a tack to now looking as if it's, you could lift it off the page. And we're good at that. We've been doing this for weeks, haven't we? Weeks. When we were doing the, um, all the doodling. I mean, next week we're off on our doodles again. We're going to park the colour. So my hope is that the, Polychromos will turn up during that week. I'm going to swim and get them. I'll meet them halfway. Um, yeah. So next week we're back on the doodles. Have you guessed where we're going yet? I kind of decided last night. I looked at what you all wanted to do and I thought, yeah, I really like that place. Never been there, mind. There's a clue. But beautiful. I know that. A lot of artwork, I know that too. So you see, this is this is all an exercise. What we're doing here is all an exercise in depth and then blending. And these these I've got to say, I do I this dry blending trick is good. It's very good. Nice, 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 nice. 
So you know, what you've got to understand as well is if the, this is the green stalk, if you like, is also in the background. So it's okay to put shadow in front of it. What it will do is it will push it back further. We tend to avoid what we've already coloured in because we think, well, that's you don't want to go over what you've already coloured in. That doesn't make sense. But actually, like this bit that I'm doing here, if you think it through, of course it's going to be in the shadow, like that. Do you see? I mean, that's a little bit extreme, but you get my picture. It's got to be in the shadow, hasn't it? And then, because it's behind them, look. So we'll just take the light one. I'm going to take that light grey, build that up as well, like so. Like that. And you go over the coloured in bits, you see. So that makes a big difference to the to the illusion of uh, depth. Right, so you can see how you're building up. Look, we've just done that little section there, but doesn't that look nice? I think that, that works really well. So, so that's the other thing that I wanted to show you. Okay. Right, break, regroup. It's easy, isn't it? Oh, stretch. It's really windy here today. What are you doing this weekend then? Have you got any plans? Have you got any plans? Are you... Are you cooking anything nice? Have you got, um, have you got um, a plan in the garden? The weather's not supposed to be so good. So I was thinking I might go over and take my mum and dad, if he wants to come, for a drive. Safe, isn't it? Big car, get them in. Because I haven't been out of the house for 10 weeks. So if I put them in the car, I could take them out to the countryside. And they can see something different. You know? Take in, take in a little bit of scenery. And I'm sure that will, be, that will be as good as anything. Don't you? Change is as good as the rest and all that. Right, let's have a look. Are we caught up yet? Are we? I told you it was basic today, but I'm I'm good. With, I'm cool with basic. Let's look again at this one, and you'll see that what I've done now as well is I've started adding shadow. So you see, check out the difference between that one and that one. Look how much darker and more um, three dimensional it is. Hmm? And the only reason is because I've taken my pencils and I've put a shadow in underneath. So again, this is a, this is a practicing game, but we're good at this because we've used HBs to do this before, haven't we? And you can use HBs again. If you feel better using an HB pencil on the shadow like this, you just go sweep, 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 like that. And then tiny little circular motions. Sweep, sweep, sweep. See, you may, you may prefer to use an HB, a nice sharp HB, like that. And you just keep kissing that side. See that? There you go. And then you can see immediately, just on that lower, if just by kissing that lower edge delicately, let's see if you can see which one I've done. It stands out. It literally stands out. And that's all you're going to do then to all of them. I'll do one with a pencil then. And just for the sake of, let's just see, just for the sake of um, experiment, right? I've done that one with an HB pencil. I'm just getting a bit of a chisel going, right? Let's do the one above it with, uh, with a colouring pencil and see which one we prefer. So again, whew. see the HB is a lot sh darker. I'll give it that, but then I haven't pressed hard yet. So I've got that one. Mm, not sure yet. The jury's out on this. 
so then of course I can always yeah there you go oh welcome to the fold blending nib that makes a difference see also I could also go in with a different with that other color and tone it down with that look here we go so now you're going to get a different look you watch the difference dreamy dreamy yeah 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 all right so so let's see if we can see the difference between the one I did with the pencil. That's this one. I guess it's just about experimenting. What, what do you feel best with? Right, so we'll do that with the pencil. Just pencil, HB. In fact, I bet the nib works well with that as well because that's quite soft. Well, there you go then. Right, that's that one. And then this is the one where I did a blend. And if you say it's too pedantic, or well, you couldn't even see what I was doing, could you? Sort of. Right, let's have a look. Sorry about that, if you couldn't see. Got carried away. It's about experimenting, I think that's what I'm going to say. So this is the one that I did with the pencil, and this is the one I did with the colouring pencil blend. So it's entirely up to you what you fancy. And maybe you think it's just too pedantic. Maybe you think... Well, I can't be bothered to worry about it that much. Um, but you, you, one or the other is going to have to do the job. So you could lay down that colour first. Look, if you want to go a bit faster, do that colour first. OK, the, the, the same as what's in the background. Then you could get your, get your chisel going. Just add a little bit of depth with, with the darker grey in there. There you go. And then if you really want a bit more shadow, go in with your HB. Use all of them. There. And straight away, it doesn't take that long, but you can see immediately how it's starting to, to build. See, I did this is a bit bolder, but you get it. And I could go in with my blending tool and I bet I could tone that right back if I want to. Yeah, straight away, look, if I think it's too dark. Obviously, didn't have my Dame Edna's on when I was doing this one. See, just tone it back. It's, it's not rubbing it out, it's just blending it in. There you go, nice. Cool. So the other thing I wanted to just finish on, let's have a look. Can you believe that it's already nearly 10-2? 10 to Friday. Friday already. Week nine next week. Mm. Are you going to hang out with me? Are you still going to come and... Because it's Bank Holiday Monday, isn't it? What should we do? I'm going to be here. There you go. Let me say this then. I shall be here. And um, if you want to join me, then feel free. Because my guess is that you're not going anywhere, per se. So um, why shouldn't we hang out together? I think sometimes it's those days particularly that um, we are a little rudderless. So let's just agree to get together, bring your passports and we're off. Oh, and you need suntan lotion. Definitely need suntan lotion. Need a sun hat, um, flip flops, but you definitely need a pair of boots as well. <laughs> No, we're not going back to New Mexico and the rattlesnakes. But um, but you definitely, definitely need a pair of boots and a pair of sunglasses. And if you've got a rifle, bring that too. <laughs> right, dots. Come on, we're going to do this frame now. And I'll show you how to do this. It's just another trick. See the little dots around the outside? I just thought this was a really nice way to finish the artwork. And I can take, for example, I can take my frame like that. I can put that in my frame and it gives it a nice finish. In fact, I bet if I did a bit more dotting, like quite a bit more around the outside and then put the black to it, that would look really good too. See, so you could go like that, but then put more dots around here so that it brings it in off the black. I think that would look quite good too. So what we want to do now, let me show you, because this is where those other, the other pens that we've hardly used kick in. 
I saw Hilda yesterday evening. I was checking your comments and I saw Hilda said, oh, I keep using the same ones and they're drying out. What about all the big fat ones? All the ones up this end. Well, there you go, Hilda. Now you're going to use them. So what, what I want to use is uh, not one. I'm going to use the three and the five. There you go. Let's use the three and the five and that'll do. That's a good place in the middle. And then if you want to, you can go to your blacks. This has been a lesson this week. Is There's been a lot of this kind of um, stippling, pointillism. Um, I, I really like that kind of artwork. There's um, right on the first day we were talking about dotting, weren't we? Dots. If you put a couple of dots around a flower, it looks lovely. So what I want to do is just show you on this one. Let's have a look. I'll show you on the one so that you can see. I definitely think, let me see, we'll start in the corner here and we're going to just start literally. But what I know is that it works better if I'm working on a black surface because I can see much better. See, I, I can see where the white card is or even on this card, which is coloured, I can see exactly where to put my dots. So this took me probably, I'd say about... 40 minutes, 45 minutes to do the dots. I'm not finished yet, but I just wanted to give you a sort of a time frame. And what we're going to do is we'll start in this corner and the first line is going to be as close to the edge as possible. And maybe we'll do a double, a double line like that. Okay. So you're going to see if you can see this. I think you can see this okay. You want to get as close to the edge as possible and they'll look nicer if they don't all touch each other. So in other words, if you just do this, it, it won't look as nice as if you do this because you're strategically placing every single dot. Now, you may think in your dreams, but it's about the result. It's about how it looks when it's done. And I know if I just pretend you've gone all the way down that edge. Right, I'll show you right up close. See if you can let it focus. Is this the right edge? Yeah. See? Let me go, 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 go. Right along there. Really strategically. All the way along like that. Yeah? But I can, I'm planning every single dot. So... And when we talk about the mindful process, this whole doodling and colouring exercise as a, as a therapy, as a way of getting out of our heads and getting with our hands, this is perfect. This is a real, real exercise in mindfulness because you're concentrating on every single little dot. Cover up your artwork so you don't lean on it, get comfortable, get your stance. And then, I, m me personally, I went all the way around the outside using one of the larger ones, number five, number eight, any one of those large is good. Close, even off the edge is good. Yeah. And then when you've done that, what you want to do now is get a bit more random. So loosen up a bit and start coming over. So now, look, you'll see I'm still holding. I'm still being very strategic. Oh, my tummy. I'm going to go and have some breakfast in a minute. Right, there you go. I do have yoghurt. See, and you cut across all the colouring as well. But you're getting looser now with your large one. Right. So now you're getting a bit more dotty, like so. Definitely getting dotty. And then when we've done, let's go all the way round. So that one was the number five, the biggest one. Right. Now I'm going to go to the number three. And what I'll do is, and this kind of blends the two together. I go back in with the number three and I fill the areas. See? So now I've left gaps, haven't I? 
and I can put smaller ones in there. And what you'll find is that really it, grad it, it, it gives you a much more of a graduated effect. You'll see. Oh, I think recycling's just turned up. <laughs> there you go. So that way, let's have a look. If I hold it up to the camera, let's see. Yeah, you see how you can, it's nice, isn't it? So you can see how you can get a really nice graduated effect. So you go all the way around the outside with the number five or the number, what we got in the tip, what we got here? We've got, uh, yeah, the number five or the number eight. So the eight's the biggest one. And then, then you, you take the same one and you go a little bit looser, but then you go back in with the number three or the number two. So you fill it. Hey, these are great. If you, if you haven't got those and you're still just using a pencil, do you know, it works with a pencil too. All you do is you just do the same things, but you just have to make little dots. And you just make the larger dots around the outside. And then as you come over this way, you just make smaller dots. So you can do the same thing with a pencil, just so you understand. You don't have to have all this stash to join in. You really do not. But if you want it, it's available. That's all I'm saying. And you'll see that even with a pencil, as you get further out, it gets thinner. You know that, we've done that all, we've done that all along. And I'm using the black pencils. It looks nice with the colouring pencils too, but this is just a way of using stippling to get a really nice framed effect. Does that work for you? Yes? So there you go, that's Dottie and Dick. I really like them. Um, I think we, we've just about done the cockerel now. So let's have a look. We've done the cockerel. We've done the nut hatch. Nice. Interchangeable for sure. Now we're going to start framing our artwork. I'm going to start putting it on the wall, I think. That one looks good. I like that. I like that. Maybe black. Don't know yet. I'm not sure. Don't know. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm making a plan. But I think it'd be quite nice to have a little Shack Shack gallery up here because all I've got is white walls here. So I may just do that, you know. Mm -hmm. I may just make myself a little Shack Shack gallery up there just for the memory, just for the memory. Mm -hmm. And so what's going on today? 12 o'clock, the next groovy download for all you lovely parchers out there. Um, we've got one planned again using the same plates as the last couple of weeks. So talk about getting mileage out of the same design. I think that's important, don't you? So that's coming up um, this weekend too to keep you busy. And um, I'll be blogging. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to blog a couple of projects this weekend. Why not? BarbaraGrayBlog.com. And I really look forward to seeing your finished artwork. I really look forward to seeing your finished artwork. And can I say, don't, don't compare your artwork with anybody else's. They're, I don't. I can't. If I did that, I'd be intimidated and then I'd feel uncomfortable. My artwork's not the best. All I want to do is motivate you to do something and to get out of your head and, and, and get with your hands. I can't start comparing m m my, my art with somebody else's. There are no judges in the building. There are, there is nobody comparing, nobody saying, oh, that's rubbish, that's great. Forget it. It's not about that. It really isn't about that. You, you, your artwork is your artwork and my artwork is my artwork. There are no judges. There are no, there are no specialists. There, this isn't a competition. Nobody's going to mark your work. It isn't, those days are well and truly over for us guys. Okay. Know thyself. Get comfortable with you and what you can do. And the more you do, like Elizabeth always says, the more you do, the more you want to do. Yeah. The more you do, the better you get. The better you get, the more you want to do. It's the truth. You know, so just go for it. 
there's n what's the worst that can happen? Just do it. I know there are loads of you watching, all sitting there looking at me going, yeah, but I'm rubbish at it. Well, how do you know you're rubbish at it if you haven't tried? <laughs> I love you and I love what you do. So, have a fantastic weekend. Be safe, be kind, be sensible, make the most of it. Make the most of it. When life gives you lemons, we make lemonade and we learn not to put turmeric in it. <laughs> it's supposed to be good for you though. Lots of love to you. Have a great weekend. Thanks Stuart for helping me out and I shall see you on Monday, Bank Holiday Monday, 10 o'clock. I shall be here. And also um, YouTube, you can catch up all of our Shack Shack hangouts, all of our sessions on YouTube. So God bless. Bye bye now.